Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a bathtub tray, also known as a bathtub caddy. Watch all the way through as I add a bonus gift idea if you're making this tray as a gift. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. First, you want to measure the width of your tub. I measured 31 inches and know my tray needs to be at least this length preferably at least a couple of inches more to have a slight overhang. I decided to go with a wooden stair tread for a staircase. My wife liked the natural look and it was smooth requiring minimal sanding. The COVID price of lumber is through the roof and this was only $10. The dimensions were perfect for a solid build requiring no cutting. Lastly, it came finished with a bullnose edge adding some detail. Next, I cut two 7 inch sections for the legs using 1x2 lumber. Ensure to wear safety glasses and ear protection when using a miter saw. Fit each leg inside the tub and use clamps for a test fit. Once you have each side clamped down, test the fit by sliding the tray to ensure it doesn't slide out. I wanted a bit of a buffer in the middle as the ends of the tub are smaller and as you see is a nice snug fit here. Turn the board over with the clamp still attached and draw a line on the outside of each leg so you can remove the clamp and know where to mount each leg. I only needed four pocket holes to mount both legs, therefore I'm using a simple R3 Craig jig. I wanted to cover some more details to make it easy as I've received questions on using a Craig jig. Measure the thickness of the material. In the case of these 1x2s, the actual thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. Set the sliders on the jig so the arrows match the thickness of the material. I mark 2 inches in on each leg for the pocket holes to mount the legs to the table. This doesn't have to be perfect, however I had a combination square set at 2 inches that made it easy to transfer measurements. Align the line on the jig with the line marked on the legs and clamp down the jig flush against the material. Adjust the clamp to have a tight clamp when drilling. Ensure the stop collar on the drill bit is set at the 3 quarter inch mark with the guide on the inside of the Craig jig case to align with the material thickness. Drill each hole until the stop collar on the bit hits the jig. Use the chart to determine what size screw you need to use. I used a 1 and 1 quarter inch pocket hole screw for joining 3 quarter inch thick stock. Earlier we marked a line to determine where to place the legs. I marked 6 inches in on each side and ensure the marks were square. Place the legs on the marked lines and clamp them down. I placed each screw in the pocket hole and then drilled each one. You can use other options such as glue and brad nails that would be sufficient as well. Next, it's time to customize the tray. I used a 5 8 inch straight router bit for the cell phone slot. I strongly recommend practicing on scrap lumber like I did to make a straight line and clean cut. I wanted to test for the right bit size and depth so the phone would be sturdy without needing any other support. I marked a line 2 inches in that was 8 inches long, centering it on the board to allow plenty of room for a phone. I double checked that I had 14 inches of space on each side of the line to the end of the board to ensure it was centered. I used a plunge router with the edge guide to get a nice straight line. With taking out a half inch deep of material, I made multiple passes with the router. I strongly recommend at least two passes to yield a clean result. I thought I was doing well until I questioned why the dust collection was not working well at all and I could barely see in the window of the router. 
I then realize the dust collection works better when it's turned on. I was happy with the result as the slot turned out straight and clean with no tear out. I checked the glasses being used for drinks and tested that it would fit in a 3 inch hole. I used my 3 inch hole saw on a piece of scrap lumber and drew a circle around it. I set the router at 3 sixteenths of an inch deep and carefully free handed the circle focusing on the outside first and then clearing out the middle. My initial thought was to do two small votive candles on each side, but my wife prefers using one large candle that also fit in the three inch size of the drink holder. I had to keep telling myself, this build isn't for me and customize it for my wife's preference. I recommend drawing a dark circle so you can clearly see in the router window. I sanded the tray with 220 grit sandpaper on all sides for a super smooth finish, as well as filled and sanded the holes for the legs which isn't necessary as they are hidden underneath. The tray should stay pretty dry for the most part, but I wanted to protect it. I used Varathane water-based polyurethane in a matte finish and used a foam applicator to apply it. The thought process with this selection was to try to keep the original look as much as possible. When applying this polyurethane, it will appear to go on milky white, but it will dry clear. I applied three coats and sanded between each coat with 220 grit sandpaper. My wife works super hard and I wanted to surprise her with some chocolate covered strawberries. I couldn't fully surprise her with the tray as I needed to partner with her on the layout to make it functional for her style. For the fresh strawberries, I dipped them in milk chocolate and decorated them with coconut, almonds, and pecans. I really appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you'd probably like as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.